Hey everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to go into blockchain. So blockchain is a buzzword that's been going on for a while and it's entering into the ERP, sort of. Uh, of course it was uh, started out with Bitcoin and those uh, cryptocurrencies and now uh, the other uses of blockchain have sort of surfaced and are being evaluated. But what I want to do, just to start things out, is talk about what blockchain is, just if you're unfamiliar with it. So what is blockchain? Um, here, blockchain. Basically, a blockchain is a network that stores data, which is linked together. So you have these blocks, which are going to be, I'm going to do them like here, like this, on a network. And they're connected, uh, and they have two um, elements to them. So the first block in the network, which is the first data point in the network, contains no block before it. It's the first entry. So the address of the first block is going to be zero. And the address of, I mean the previous block, because there's no previous block. But the address of the current block, this block here, basically what the system does, it takes the size of this block, whatever is contained in the data of this block, and does a, a mathematical algorithm and hashes out a long string, which is the address of the block, or basically the signature of the block. And I'm going to call it uh, AB or AC052. Uh, it's going to be much bigger than that. Uh, it's a very long string, but just for demo purposes, I'm going to call it that. Now, so this address is stored in the next block that comes onto the chain. So it's, it keeps a record of the previous block. That's how they're connected together. Uh, and then this block, the new data element that comes in, is of course of different size than this one. Let's say this block contains a name, like John, and an age, let's say uh, 30. Nothing else. So when they hash this data to create this string, uh, this is a string out of that hash. Now let's say this block contains Peter, and uh, 50. So Peter generates a different hash, and that's going to be, let's say, BF18C. And that's going to be the hash of this data, which is the signature for this block. And that is, of course, stored in the next block. So BF18C, and then this could be. Uh, Laura, uh, that could be 28, and that could be HX50. Uh, so this is how the blockchain sort of works, the construct of blockchain. And it co connects together. If you're into IT and you've done a lot of IT before, you recognize this sort of like a linked list that actually links back as well. Um, and so, so we just create this chain, uh, blockchain, all the way through. Now, so why is this such a revolutionary idea? It really isn't. Uh, what is important about blockchain? Well, one thing that's important is that every time you add to a blockchain, let's say a new element here, uh, there is a proof of work that happens, and it's called POW or proof of work algorithm. And what that does, it actually goes over uh, the blockchain and confirms that the consistency of the blockchain is correct so that you cannot delete element out, out and a new element that's being brought in is consistent. So this algorithm actually makes sure that everything is correct and that secures the blockchain. So people are not messing with it. So it's a good audit control. Um, and this actually algorithm takes time, so sometimes it takes 10 minutes or is known to take 10 minutes, which makes the blockchain maybe a little bit slow. And that is one thing that's actually talked about is blockchain too slow to be used um, for certain situations. But the reason why it takes long is that the people cannot uh, sort of change everything before the proof of work is done and therefore kind of fool the proof of work or you know it slows down basically uh, an attack on the system or makes it almost impossible to change 
Uh, and also, what's another secure element about this is, let's say if this blockchain is kept in one network, um, on one computer, in one database, or something like that, and you can actually create your own blockchains on Azure, so you could create one like this and start using it. And that's the whole reason why we're talking about it, because it's available on Azure in 365. Uh, there will be another network uh, that keeps a copy of this. So it has the exact same thing set up. And when the proof of work algorithm is going through, it also queries the other networks to make sure that everybody is consistent. And if there are inconsistencies, then it errors out and the blockchain is broken and needs to be fixed um, and doesn't allow the new entities to come in. So, so blockchain, therefore, is very secure. Um, it's distributed, which means it's kept all over the place. It's sort of like the DNS for internet, like the domain name services. There's multiple servers all over the place. There are big organizations like universities that take care of those servers and make sure that is fine. So if we compare blockchain to DNS, for example, the uh, DNS is meant to make sure that the internet runs well or the web runs well. Um, however, and, and it's a single purpose that everybody kind of shares. We just want to be able to type in a domain name and it recognizes it as an IP and, uh, and on we go. However, with blockchain, it's not really the same thing. Blockchain, each and every blockchain has a different purpose and is created for a different reason. And so one of the issues is that we haven't really gotten a, a, a list of independent providers uh, coming together and maintaining the blockchains or whatever blockchain with whatever purpose on a distributed scale. So for example, in food, um, Walmart just announced that everybody who is dealing with Walmart, all suppliers have to now send information into their blockchain to make sure that the traceability is perfect and that they have until September of this year. So that's a big announcement. And they're committed to blockchain. And they're working with IPM, which has a blockchain, uh, blockchain setup to, uh, to get that going, to get this effort in place. So we have then a blockchain generated for specific purpose, which is food traceability, and being maintained by a large entity like IPM, IBM, and they are probably partnering with other larger entities to create a distributed setup of the blockchain. So in that case, um, it would probably be good. <laughs> so we hope that. Obviously, I could create a blockchain today. I could contain uh, or ask people to send data into the blockchain, but it might not necessarily be that secure because I'm the only one. I haven't distributed out with other uh, elements. So there are you know, some notions of the blockchain that are going to be in question. And that's one of the reasons why this has not become like a DNS thing, because DNS has one purpose, which everybody agrees on. And fortunately, back in the day when it was implemented, people were very neutral. Um, so what we're going to do in the next video, we're going to dive into Azure and actually create a blockchain and see how that works. And we'll do some screen sharing then. But for now, we'll just digest this.